I want to walk through all my notes for chapter 8. Let's start with exploring exponential models, meaning basically exploring growth and decays. And so basically what you have to realize for a growth that goes up like this, your B value, or the value that's powered, has to be bigger than 1. And for a decay, which goes down like this, the B value has to be less than 1, or between 0 and 1. Not dealing with negatives here. The first value is what you begin with. So the 3 is what you begin with here. So we start at 3. 80, we start at 80. And then this is your B, your, what you're growing or decaying by. Make a little table, make your graph, you're good to go. Now, we look at these just equations, and all we ask in these equations is, is it a growth or decay? So since this is bigger than 1, it's a growth. Less than 1 is decay. And this is actually bigger than 1, so it's also a growth. Now, here we have some word problems to deal with growth and decays. And with word problems, we deal with interest rates. These are the ones I'm dealing with. Um, and here's the formula. This is called a decay because you're minusing r. A growth is you add r. And uh, if, if you look at all the values, they say what each one is here. And so you read the question, plug the values where they belong, and basically make an equation, and then your calculator can make the answer. So you basically are just setting up the equation according to what's your p, your r, your t, your a, and making an equation and solving it. Then we get into logarithms. Logarithms are how we solve um, exponents. Anyways, and what you do is you basically take this true statement, put a log in front, and switch the 81 and the 2. Just make sure you know the 81. This is log 81, and the base is 9. So the, the 9 is now the base, which is it's the base of the exponent here. So now it's the base of the log. Here, first I rewrote it, then I put the log on, switch the 2. Here, once I am in a log, I want to go back to exponents. What you do is you take off the log and switch these two. So when you switch these two, that becomes 4 to the 30 equals this. If there's no base, it's base 10. It says right here. And uh, again, you switch these two, drop the log. And then these three are just solving, finding the values. And what I do is I put equals x, equals something, equals something. So you want to know what it equals. So you say equals something. And then you drop the log and switch the two. And you kind of look at this and think, what would that value have to be? So 4 to the what power is 16? 10 to the what power is 100, and so forth. All right, and then you have some properties of logs. The properties where if you have two things multiplied inside of a log, you can make it a plus. If you have two things minus, you can make it divide. And if you have a power, you could take it out front. And we do something called expand condensing. So we're going to take all these into one log like this. And what you do first is you take anything in front, make it powers. See right here, these two. And then a plus, like we said up here, is a multiply. A minus is a divide. So pluses are basically on top, minuses are on bottom. This one's a little bit more complicated because they distribute a one-half power, which is a square root. A little bit more complicated, but the same idea. Here, we're going to expand, so we're going to spread this out, so you can see the answer here. And basically, the 4 is the first piece. It's on top, so it's positive. And then these two are in bottom, so they're minus. Any powers go out front. And then if you can simplify these, simplify them, because that's 1. This one's a lot harder, so if you basically separate them, um, make this one half power instead of a square root, one half comes out front. It just it takes a quite a bit more work, but they can get as ugly as this. But this is normally what most expanding look like. Then you have evaluate or basically simplify. So you look at this and go, oh, that's three according to this. Look at this, oh, that's two according to this process, and then you just do the math. This is another way of doing it if you want it another way. Uh, here, what you have is you want to find log 150 without a calculator. What we do is we give you two pieces. So with fives and sixes, you want to make 150 out of fives and sixes. And what I've noticed is 5 times 5 times 6, which is 25 times 6. And so basically, from here, you can expand it according to our properties we talked about a second ago. And then if you look at these values, you replace those values, boom, 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 and you add it all up, you get 2.2. Or simply put it in your calculator but it's supposed to be for when you don't have a calculator, that kind of problem. Uh, next, we have something called a change of base formula. Basically, if you have a log, you can separate it into two separate logs. The base is the bottom log, and what the log is of is the top. And you use this when you're trying to solve. So for instance, what you do here, we're going to solve this exponent. You just you basically solve it over so you get it to this point. Then I put the word log in front and switch these two. And then right here, I could solve that with this change of base formula, this over this, which is 1.4. It's right here. And then you simply solve. 
And then right here is if a little bit different because you have exponents on both sides, you want to first make it so they both have the same base. Otherwise, you can't do it at least with what we're dealing with. And so what you make 25 into uh, 5 squared, and then you can multiply that. It's called take a power to a power you multiply. See right here? You have 6x plus 2. And then basically, logic would state that if the bases are the same, the exponents have to be the same. So I can basically drop the, the bases and solve the simple equation. So you have problems where the, you have two exponents and you have problems with one exponent. If there's one exponent, you get it by itself and change it to a log. If there's two exponents, you've got to make them have the same base. So that's how you solve exponents with logs. Now if I want to solve logs, you solve them with exponents. So watch, you get the log all by itself, move everything over, then you drop the log and switch these two. 5 to the third is 125, and you solve it. Over here, you'll know this is base 10. Minus means condense, so I can make that divide. And then I get 10 to the first. I mean, we drop the log, 10 to the first equals this. And what I do is I multiply both sides by 3 and simply solve. Now, one thing you have to worry about with logs, you have to watch out, watch out for extraneous solutions. Basically, you have to take the answers and plug them back in to make sure they didn't cause an error. Because logs can't have negatives inside. So if I take this value and plug it in here, i got to make sure it doesn't create a negative. If I take this and plug it inside, it doesn't create a negative. Neither of these do, but you have to start watching for that because there could be answers that you did everything right, but it still doesn't work. So watch out for extraneous. These aren't, but watch out. All right, natural logs is the next step is basically they put in one basic new thing. They put, instead of log base 10, they have now bought log base E. This is the value of E, 2.71a, and you write it as ln. Log base E is ln. So when you see this, it's just log base E's. And so it's basic condensing like we did earlier. And we get it to this value, this log, ln, sorry. Here, just like we did previously, some other simplification, except ln e, see right here? This is log base e, e, which is really ln e. ln e is 1. So all you do is you basically take the 5 out front, see right here? And then this is 1, and do the math. And then we have solving with lns. So you basically solve with lns, you get it down to ln blank. And then you make this log base E, drop the LN, switch the two, and solve for N. For this one, you get the E by itself, put the word log in front, switch the two, log base E9 is LN, move everything over. Again, a calculator would help for these, but you could leave them like this on a test, depending on how the answer is written, or if you have a calculator. And on this one, what you do is you basically plus means multiply, you FOIL it all out. Add the 25 over, and then you get two answers, plus or minus the square root of 26, which technically I don't have it written here, but the negative square root of 26 is extraneous. So technically the answer is just square root of 26. So basically when you solve, you got to sometimes condense. If it's, an, if it's a log, you want to change it to an exponent. If it's an exponent right here, you want to change it to a log, and then you just deal with LNs or base E's with this section. And the last piece is this PERT formula. It's continuously compounding. What we do is you read the question, plug in all the data. When you plug it all in, you get e to some power. If you go this, you basically solve. And then when I solve, I use logs to finish solving it. So you have to log both sides and, and go from there to solve it, which is 10%. Um, again, this is kind of a good application of how logs are necessary and help a real life situation. Hopefully this helps.